Another worrisome aspect of Spitzer's study was his method for gathering data, which consisted of a mere 45-minute telephone interview with each participant. Participants who were married also completed a short written survey sent by mail. In other words, Spitzer never met his participants face-to-face -face and relied entirely on self-reporting for participants, many of whom had built their livelihoods as leaders of ex-gay groups. Lawrence Hartman, former president of the APA, wrote, Spitzer relies wholly on self-reporting and on one 45-minute telephone interview, which is understandably convenient and cheap, but allows rather easy evasion, distortion, and lies. Wayne Besson, gay activist author of Anything But Straight, Unmasking the Scandals and Lies Behind the Ex-Gay Myth, wrote in his book. Despite our insistence, Spitzer elected not to use physical evidence to corroborate the ex-gay testimonies. I asked him why he had refused to use either the polygraph or the penile plethysmograph on his subjects. According to Spitzer, there was no way he could get his subjects to submit to such tests. It never seemed to dawn on Spitzer that these individuals were avoiding these truth-detecting instruments because they were not telling the truth. We've established how unreliable the Spitzer study is. Surely no religious organization promoting morality and proclaiming God's perfect and absolute truth would want anything to do with it. Let's take focus on the family, for example. I'm sure they've got standards for studies they'll accept. In this DVD titled, Why Not Gay Marriage?, put out by Focus on the Family, senior policy analyst Glenn Stanton attacks studies favoring gay parenting on the basis such studies were conducted over too short of a period of time and too narrow in scope. Let's watch. Social sciences need two things in order to come to a sure definitive conclusion. It needs a large population of people to study, and it needs a very, very long time to study that large population over, to see the impact. Glenn here sure makes it sound like Focus has high scientific standards, and no doubt would avoid associating with the Spitzer study, which after all was conducted over a year and a half period, and only included 200 participants who were almost exclusively white and Christian. And based on Spitzer's criteria, only people who had successfully changed their sexuality were even eligible to participate in the study. Really. Do you think I would be making this video if anti-gay groups considered the moral implications of misrepresenting and distorting the study? And it's not just focus on the family that cites the Spitzer study in its war against equality for gay Americans. Here are some websites for various anti-gay groups that cite the study. Again, there's focus on the family. The Traditional Values Coalition. The American Family Association. The Center for Reclaiming America for Christ the Family Research Council, Concerned Women for America's Culture and Family Institute, the Idaho Values Alliance, the Nebraska Family Council, the Illinois Family Institute, Protect Marriage Illinois, PFOX, Parents and Friends of Ex-Gays and Gays, Exodus International, and the National Association for Research and Therapy of Homosexuality. Now let's look at exactly how the Spitzer study is used by these groups. Remember, the Spitzer study is nothing more than a collection of interviews with 200 people who claim to have achieved change. Spitzer freely admits it was never meant to measure the overall success rate of ex-gay programs. Yet here, in Focus on the Family's explanation of how homosexuality is treatable and preventable, James Dobson himself cites the Spitzer study. As I've explained, the study is nothing more than a tiny group of people who self-reported change, yet the religious right rarely presents it as such. Rather, these anti-gay groups are applying those expectations of change on all gay people who they claim, quote, can be set free. The Spitzer study is being cited in opposition to the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, a law that would protect gay Americans from being fired from their jobs just for being gay. And most recently, it's being used in campaigns for state constitutional amendments banning gay marriage. How in the world did we get from a telephone interview of 200 people to passing anti-gay constitutional amendments? What does Spitzer himself think of his study being used for political oppression? Let's do a quick review, and then we'll see what he has to say. 
Spitzer released his study, which despite some serious flaws, was immediately picked up by the media because of its politically charged subject matter. The vast majority of people who took the study were referred by their former therapist, and almost a quarter were ex-gay for pay, including some political lobbyists. Spitzer could have used the lie detector, but instead only used the phone. Despite its flaws, a slew of anti-gay organizations have used the study in their war on the civil rights of gay people, all I should add against the will of Robert Spitzer. Here's what Spitzer had to say for himself in the Wall Street Journal. My study concluded with an important caveat, that it should not be used to justify a denial of civil rights to homosexuals or as support for coercive treatment. I did not conclude that all gays should try to change, or even that they would be better off if they did. However, to my horror, some of the media reported the study as an attempt to show that homosexuality is a choice and that substantial change is possible for any homosexual who decides to make the effort. Everything you see and hear these days is remixed, edited, filtered through some kind of software, and then sent back out to the world, you know? Thank you.